in Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Four minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. One of these days, we're going to meet Ryuho Okawa. Robert, we've yes. we've spoken to him, I think, once. Yes. We've spoken to a lot of people representing his work many times. I don't know if we've ever spoken to Mia Tomakawa. She's on the phone right now. Um, Ryuho Okawa wrote a book called The Strong Mind, and that's what we're going to talk about. The art of building the inner strength to overcome life's difficulties. Mia Tamakawa is an editor and the United States spokesperson for the book, The Strong Mind, by uh, Ryuho Okawa, who is a spiritual leader. And the guy doesn't stop writing. He just one book after another. It's amazing how many books he puts out there. It's amazing the following he has. Uh, and it's always a, it's always an interesting conversation. And I just love the fact that his name, Okawa, sounds like our city, Okawa. Yes, just, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so, so if you think we're saying the name of the city wrong, we're not. We're saying Mr. Okawa, who's uh, the author of the book we're going to talk to, uh, to Mia Tomakawa about. Good morning, Mia. How are you? Good. Hi, Larry and Robin. How are you today? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You sound so sweet. Where are you? Where are you calling from? <laughs> I'm actually calling from Tokyo, Japan. You're in Tokyo? Nice. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's my that's on my bucket list. What <laughs> what, what what is the weather like? <laughs> oh, it's very sunny and humid. It is. What time is it there? I thought yes, it would be I thought, hot. I thought it would be nighttime already. No? Yes, it's uh 11 p.m. here, so I think I'm uh 11 hours ahead oh. of you. It's 11 p.m. and it's sunny? Oh, and it it is sunny. Well, it's at night, but it's hot and humid. (laughs) Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. Um, Well, thank you for being on the air with us. When when you live in the United States, where do you live? I lived in Los Angeles. Oh, in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, How is is Ryuho Okawa doing? How is he? Oh, he's been very busy. He's been very active. He's giving... Uh, he's been giving lectures every week and publishing book almost a, uh, one book a week. Oh my God! He's been doing really well. He can yes, write, he writes very, one. I uh, has lots of energy. One book a week. Yes. Does he ever sleep? I hope so. I hope he's <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> this book is two two hundred twenty four pages. Um, right now, it's doing really well on Amazon, and so he's just non- hes just a, a constant writing, huh? Always writing. Yes, and he's also speaking in front of people, so he's very dedicated, dedicated to his work. Is his message always the same? No, it's very different because he talks about many different topics in many different fields. Yeah. This one is about, you know, cultivating your mind and spirituality, but he talks about, like, management, politics, economy, and other uh, fields as well. So. so tell to us, you know, everybody believes that they have a strong mind, Do you, I, and I, I, I'm... I'm I'm kind of on the feel, I'm kind of feel like most people do. I think most people have a strong mind. Uh, I think sometimes we let other people, uh, for lack of a better way to say this, bully us with with our minds, you know. But I think we all pretty much have strong minds. Mm-hmm. Oh, you you think so? Uh, well, I I believe so too. But many people at the same time don't realize that they really have the power to make it even stronger. Okay. So this book talks about how you can cultivate a, even a stronger mind. All right, that is that is an interesting uh, comment. Now, if it, is there a difference between the brain and the mind? Yes. The brain is a kind of function to think and kind of make sense of things. And whereas mind is, I think, closer to your heart and it has more emotion and it actually has the power to uh, change the course of your life, so to speak. Is, is, there, um, is there anything in Mr. Okawa's, teach, in Okawa's teachings um, and maybe in the book, The Strong Mind, 
that helps us understand how to use the 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 um, the power of the mind. You know, you always hear people say, "You can do anything if you put your mind to it." And and when they say anything, they mean anything. They mean land a man on the moon. They mean get the get a better job. They mean uh, find the perfect wife or husband. Um, how do you do? How do you do that? How do you tap into that part of the mind? Well, um, I think you can approach it approach it from many different ways. So it's kind of difficult to explain every single aspect. Mm-hmm. But um, I think the main thing is that. We can't really control what happens to us. You know, we face many issues, difficulties, many people we don't like, for example. (laughs) And these are the things that we cannot control. But we can control the way we see these situations and the people. And by changing our perspective, we can change our understanding of what's going on. And in a sense, we can change uh, our attitude and what we do take, or you know, what kind of actions you take. And by changing your attitude and your actions, you can actually change the course of your life. And I think that's the power of the mind that we, everyone has. And one of the things you, he talks about in his book is stoutness. I have not heard that phrase before used in that way, and I thought it was very uh, inspiring. Mm-hmm, right, stoutness in this book, he means strength, but it has courage. You have to have the courage to keep moving forward. And he talks a lot about uh, how fear kind of interferes with us when we try to move on. You know, it really stops us from taking action and doing uh, new things. And stoutness is the way to uh, overcome the fear and weakness over heart where does he get his wisdom from well he reads a lot i think he once mentioned that he reads like 200 books a week or something like that oh wow <laughs> and also he writes one yes. and reads 200 <laughs> it's crazy. Holy i know Michael. yes yes it's amazing yeah and he talks to people of course he listens to you know people and also, I think he also meditates a lot. So he deepens his wisdom by trying to learn from everything that, you know, he read and he listened and try to understand kind of the laws of life, right. how things right. work. And that's how he deepens his wisdom, I think. He talks about inner maturity. And uh, sometimes people don't have that. They have to take responsibility for their own selves and they refuse mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I think this is something that I think in this book he talks how uh, adults and the parents should uh, teach their children as part of the education because um, I think maturing ourselves as uh, adults is part of taking responsibility your for your own lives and uh he believes that it is. This is a very important aspect of education. Actually, besides you know reading books and studying and memorizing things. Uh, the the website Okawa Books is um, where I just went, and you, you can find I think all of his books there. Um, and he there's a picture of him. He is a very young and good looking guy, isn't he? <laughs> he is in. He, I think he's uh, almost uh, 60, 60 years old what? now. And he doesn't look that old. Yeah. No. He, he lives younger. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't look that old at all. He has inner peace. Oh, he's my good. gosh. All right. Uh, so, um, exactly. Yeah. Do, do you know him? Have you ever spent time with him? Well, not on a one on one basis, but I've been to his lectures and I've listened to him talk and. I've seen him in person in that same sense, yes. What, how did he change or affect you? How did you f- change listening to him or reading his books? Well, he changed my life in a way that, um, how do I say, uh, he really changed the, me, uh, I, I really, I was able to really change the way I see myself and the world through listening to him 
And I think I have to be more specific. But for example, um, he taught me about how love is about giving and not taking. And it's a very simple message. But by myself contemplating on what he was talking about, I was really able to change uh, the way I see myself in the world. And I think his teachings are very deep. And you can almost contemplate each of the sentences from the book, and you can really deepen your understanding of your life. Huh. Is it spiritual in, in that? Does he believe there is um, a God or, or a, a spirit um, that looks over us or is there for us, if, if, if you know what I'm saying? Yes, of course, he believes in God, and he believes in the existence of the spirit and the spirit world, and he presents this idea about how we return to the other world or the spirit world when we die, and the world we return to really depends on how we live in this world. So if we live a good life and did a lot of good things, we can return to a higher world. But if we didn't, you know, if you're mean to people, didn't did nasty things, we return to a lower level of heaven. So it's very fair. He presents this idea that nothing will go get wasted. You know, whatever the efforts you make will be rewarded when you return to the other world, and because you return to different levels of heaven. Uh, Mr. Okawa is very insightful. He uh, breaks down uh, the uh, decades of life from birth, from birth to when a person dies, and each decade seems to have its own challenges. Like if you're 20, you have mm-hmm. a different challenge than if you're 40. Mm-hmm. I think this is uh, a kind of Buddhist perspective of, of looking at life. I think uh, Shakyamuni Buddha, a founder of Buddhism, was a very um, realistic person who was able to see life by breaking it down into different um, periods. And he took this stance in analyzing life in this world. And I think in this chapter, he talks about how if we are prepared we can better deal with things when they come. So when we know that, you know, each decade we face these issues, and when we know that we'll be facing them, we can prepare ourselves, and that way we can, you know, solve and deal these issues when they actually come. Uh, Mia Tomikawa is our guest, and she is an editor, and in, she's in Tokyo, but she's the United States spokesperson for the book The Strong Mind, um, written by uh, Ryuho Okawa, who is a spiritual leader. And I, and I went to the website okawabooks.com. Let me spell Okawa for you, because for those locally, you might think I'm saying Okala, which is the city. Um, Okawa, his last name, in other words, is O K A. W A. So put okawabooks.com and you'll see the all the books that he's written and and the amazing accomplishments and you'll see how young he looks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, he he uh, uh, Mr. Okawa talks about ego. He he says that sometimes people will start accomplishing things and then they'll have an attitude that's very judgmental toward others. Mhm. Yes, and I think the judgment attitude that he talks about can be overcome by really understanding other people's uh, perspectives. I think when we focus on our ego, we focus on just our own perspective. So we neglect to see how others feel or how others see the same situation. And um, I think he used the phrase, other focused attitude, which is to really put yourself in the <laughs> shoe of other people and see the same situation from their point of view. And he uh, offers that this is a very good way to improve your relationship with other people because a lot of times misunderstanding is the cause of uh, conflicts and relationship issues. 
Sometimes, uh, in because in America we have uh, Christianity is, is a big, obviously a big religion. Uh, Judaism is a big religion. Uh, obviously, a lot of Muslim people and a lot of there's a lot of Buddhists here too. I I wonder if sometimes he's surprised if if Mr. Okawa is surprised that the people who are Christian. Um, love what he writes because, and here's why I say that I was just reading some reviews and one of the ladies said that she's hey, I'm a Christian but I love what Mr. Okawa says because it makes sense to her uh, and I'm guessing that's probably mm -hmm. true as long as it sounds as long as something resonates as true I, I think we're okay with it regardless of our religion what do you what are you th your thoughts on that yes I agree with you um, and he um Mr. Oka also says that all religions um, fundamentally have the same roots and they are trying to teach the same truth just from different angles. So there, like for example, he uses this example of uh, describing a huge mountain mm -hmm. and d depending on where you're looking at it from, you describe it, it differently. But overall, you know, they're all trying to describe the same truth, just from different angles. And in that sense, I think we all can understand each other, even if we have different religious backgrounds. He uh, talks about forgiveness. Uh, it's very, very hard to forgive someone when you feel like they've ripped your heart out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he um, talks about how forgiveness is really not only about forgiving other people but also at the same time at the same time forgiving yourself because when you forgive someone you kind of let go of a sense of resentment and if you're holding on to resentment forever you're not gonna make yourself happy so forgiveness really has the yeah. power yes to not only to make other people happier, but also bring happiness to your life. So he really recommends, although it's very difficult, he uh, really recommends that we feel forgive the people we don't like or we hate. It's, it's interesting as we pass through life and, and go from being children to, to old people, that the, the messages we get from those people who've maybe been more spiritual than ourselves, um, the messages always resonate. If if you're a little child and you hear a message that's for a little child, you you embrace it and you and it makes you feel a little better or makes you behave a little better maybe. Uh, but that uh, but I'm 63 and the same thing happens now. It, it doesn't seem to change. <clears throat> did he did he learn from his father? Is is there uh, an element of his father in this particular book? Yes, uh, he talks about his father's ex experiences of uh, difficult times. For example, uh, poverty and um, he had huge debt and he was really not successful in, in business and he also suffered from major illnesses. And when you look at um, his father's life from the point of view of just suffering and difficulties, it was just a difficult life. But um, he actually talks about um, the things that he was able to learn from his father, just uh, courage, strength, and all the meaningful things that he learned from father really nurtured him. So he talks about this example as a way to really uh, influence each other when we overcome difficulties and challenging challenges ourselves we can actually use that wisdom to help other people. And, you know, it's really making your mind stronger. It's not only about yourself, but it actually can affect and change the lives of other people. Why did uh, Mr. Okawa bring into his book, George W. Bush and Al Gore? Why was he making a comparison? <laughs> Yes, that's a very interesting uh, comparison, I thought, and I think he used this example as how we um, unconsciously kind of evaluate people based on the, he uh, talks about the three developmental stages of character growth, and he introduces that there are three stages of uh, character growth, and even though we're not conscious of this, these stages, 
um, we kind of see people using um, these evaluations and he ta- he says that although you know uh, Al Gore was much more uh, smarter and more intelligent than Bush, uh, Bush was able to win that election because he was able to use people and people uh, unconsciously choose people who can use other people because that's um, ability of uh, leadership. So I thought that was a very interesting um, analogy. Hmm. It is very interesting. <laughs> I'm not so sure I agree with all that, but yeah. Mm-hmm. But it it's is an interesting it, analogy. It is interesting. So what, what kind of things <laughs> does he say get in the way of us having strong minds? Are there things we do like ego or like um, oh, I don't know, being selfish? Are those the things that get in the way of having a strong mind? Yes, um, that too, of course. But I think the biggest thing is to really uh, be in, in charge of your own life, trying to take responsibility for your life. Because a lot of times I think people uh, blame other people or environments they are in for the misfortunes and unhappiness that they experience. But uh, when you really accept the fact that you are in control of your of your life and you can really change your life, and that's when you can start nurturing even stronger mind. Because when you really keep saying that you know it's because other people's fault or environment's fault that I'm not successful, I'm not happy, mm-hmm. you can never really nurture your mind. So I think that's the main point. I have a question for you. Um, uh, going back to mm-hmm. something you said earlier, you you said that when we um, die, that we come back to a better place if we've been good, and a not so good place if we weren't good. Is it possible that that place is right here? That it's it, that, that the good and the bad live side by side. Uh, you mean right here, meaning in this physical world? Or? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, well, he actually talks about some people not wanting to leave this world because they kind of cling to their um, things that they had in this world. And so some people kind of stay, and <laughs> that's um, some of the spirits actually remain in this world for a while until they really realize that you know it's really time for them to return to the other world oh really i would love to i don't know it it just seems like all the other worlds are dusty and hot and <laughs> our, 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 this world seems like the best world it's got water <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, he he talks about having faith in oneself also, and that if you have faith in your own self, you can restore amounts of energy to keep you pushing forward. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think faith, having faith in yourself, is really the starting point because unless you believe that you can do it, uh, you'll never be able to do it. Of course, and. Even if you want to accomplish uh, a big, you know, project or anything that you want to accomplish with your life, the first person you want to persuade that you can do it is yourself. Because unless you believe in it, you'll never be able to do it. So, I think it's a very, very um, powerful thought. Um, I want to reintroduce you and make sure people know how to look at the books. Uh, Mia Tomakawa is our guest. She's representing uh, the author and spiritual guide, um, uh, spiritual leader, Ryuho Okawa. Where is he right now? Is he in Tokyo also? Yes, he lives in Tokyo. Okay. Uh, You talk about interacting with uh, people that have disabilities or illnesses, and that's a very important point, too, not to make you feel like, not not to make a person feel like they're above anybody else. Mm -hmm. And he also introduces this interesting idea about how life is a workbook of life, and we know before we were born, what kind of issues we're supposed to face. And he says how, uh, you know, illness and disability is also part of our workbook of life. So they chose to have these issues to polish and nurture their souls. It's not really a negative aspect at all. It's actually a very positive thing that 
they chose to be born with. Huh, that's interesting. Um, the the um, th- does he believe in prayer? Yes, he does. Okay. Um, the the book is called The Strong Mind. Um, I found it on Amazon, and uh, again, it's written by uh, Ryuho Okawa. O k a w a. Um, the the website I have is okawabooks.com. Is there anything else we should tell the listeners, Mia? Um, yes. Well, if you go to the website, you can find more about the book. And also, this book is available uh, online and bookstores nationwide. So if you um, have a chance to go visit your book, so please um, take a look at that book. Okay. Uh, you have a huge task in front of you, um, Mia. You are uh, representing the works of uh, one of the greats, but you also have um, your own interests at heart and everything. How do you keep it all balanced? Well, I lost my job and I really like, you know, spreading these messages because they can really help other people. And it really means a lot to me to be able to be part of other people's lives and, you know, try to know that I can, I'm kind of trying to help them and uh, spread these messages. Gosh. It, it, it's interesting, for, to say the least. Um, Mia Tomakawa, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's 11 o'clock in Tokyo. Are you going to bed now? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Thank, thank you, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. President Trump's former attorney Michael Cohen has said in the past he'd take a bullet for the president and do anything for him. In an off-camera interview, ABC's George Stephanopoulos asked Cohen what he'd do if offered leniency in return for information. 